If you're new to soldering or you're finding it a bit difficult, then these tips, tricks and techniques might be just what you're looking for. Okay, getting straight into it. In this video, we're going to cover soldering iron types, the types of solder that you can use, basic soldering techniques and how to desolder. Let's get into it. Okay, there's two basic types of irons. You've got a fixed temperature version like this one, and then you've got an adjustable temperature version like this one. Uh, you can get adjustable irons from as low as $45, and you can get a fixed type from as low as about $10. Highly recommend the adjustable temperature version. It gives you much greater control. Uh, different types of soldering surfaces, different types of projects, as well as different types of solder. Uh, so yeah, if you can ever afford it, get yourself a, an adjustable temperature soldering iron. Okay, there are two main types of solder. There is the tin lead mix, normally 60-40, and then there is the 99% tin, 1% copper variety, which is um, lead free. That's where everything's heading at the moment, but I still prefer using the 60-40 um, mixture. And they come in a few different sizes. Generally speaking, you'll work it with 0.5 mil, 0.7 mil, 1 mil, and there are some niche sizes in between. Uh, generally, 0.7 is your go-to size for general work. If you're doing larger jobs, you'll probably want 1 mil or bigger. Uh, and then we're talking about those that have cores, so resin core, flux core, uh, multi-core, which means it has holes in the center of the solder to provide flux to your work job. So, uh, yep, you want a, uh, a flux cord version and a couple of different sizes, maybe 0 0.5, 0 0.7 and 1 mil. Um, you can choose whether or not you want lead free or the older version, 60, 40, uh, tin and lead. There are two main types of soldering that you'll get involved with. One will be trying to uh, join wires together in, in one form or another and the other will be your circuit board type work, whether it's surface mount parts or through hole parts. So if you've got a set of helping hands, you can use this technique in order to be able to uh, join your wires together. Simply bring the iron up underneath, typically, and bring the solder to the top. Obviously you want to heat the job, not the solder. Never apply the solder to the tip of your iron, because uh, it it'll start to flow, but it will flow prematurely. Another way of doing this is actually to place the wires on a flat surface, something that you don't mind um, heating up a little bit. Um, in this case it's just a bit of chipboard and I don't care if I put a couple of burn marks on it. So put them on a flat surface, put them together like this and using a chisel tipped or a screwdriver tipped uh, um, soldering iron, apply that to the job, get that to hold the job in place and then apply the solder to the job and it will start flowing. Obviously in this case the iron is nice and hot and I'm using the flat surface and the soldering tip to do all of the holding for me. As you can see here, the solder is nice and shiny and I've got a little bit of a lip on one corner there. I can just trim that off with a set of side cutters and I've got a reasonable solder joint that I can put uh, heat shrink tubing or tape or whatever I need over it later. The other common way of soldering wires together is to mechanically twist them together first. Uh, just neatly twist them together and then apply that to the flat surface. If you don't have to hold it, don't hold it. Put it down on a flat surface, then apply your iron to it, and uh, solder as you would have done before. So there we have the two wires soldered together. Uh, and from this point, you can fold back uh, the soldered wire to uh, one of the other um, actual pieces of wire, just flatten them out, and that way you've got enough um, uh, area in order to be able to apply heat shrink tubing or tape or whatever it is you need to do to seal the uh, seal the join. So in this example I'm going to show how you can solder a uh, through hole component, in this case a resistor, to a bit of proto board or a circuit board. So you just feed it through like you would normally do. Um, and yep, just uh, in this case I've got uh, a long run, uh, they're not single holes. So apply the soldering iron to the work surface, the trace and the job, and apply the solder to the opposite side of the job and on the trace. And normally about five seconds or so you should have enough heat in order to be able to flow the solder. 
I'm flowing a bit more solder than I needed, but it's just to demonstrate how the uh, solder actually flows when it's hot enough. All right, so there you go. There's the solder joint. Not too bad. Like I said, a bit too much solder. Uh, now the other leg, it's a slightly different trace. There's only a, a three pin trace on this one. And again, apply the solder uh, iron to the outside. Push in, a little bit of pressure, a little bit of pressure on the leg of the component as well as the pad and apply the solder to the other side and let it flow. Again, I've flowed more solder than I needed just for demonstration purposes. Yep, doesn't look too bad. You can desolder using a vacuum pump or some braid. I'm using braid in this example. Just heat up your iron, place it on top of the solder joint. Uh, so keeping the braid in between the soldering iron and your actual piece of solder and a little bit of pressure and it sucks up the solder into the braid quite quickly and easily. So as you can see there, uh, that's done extremely well. Virtually no solder left. The part's just fallen out and you can see the uh, excess solder as it's been absorbed into that piece of braid. Just cut that bit of braid off your braid loop and you're right to go again. So thanks very much for joining me and watching the show. Subscribers are always welcome, so feel free to subscribe, that would be great. And I hope you'll join me again next week.